In this video, I want to talk about observational studies and experimental studies and discuss what they are as well as their differences. And as you work through this video, make sure to check the description below for links to various resources that you can use to help further your understanding on this topic. An observational study is one in which the researcher will either observe what's happening now or what has happened in the past. They then try to draw conclusions based on these observations. An observational study is characterized by only observing or measuring, but not manipulating any of the variables. So we can only observe what is happening or measure something that has happened, but we cannot manipulate anything. And there are actually three different types of observational studies, so let's take a deeper look at each one of these three. The first is a cross-sectional study. For a cross-sectional study, data is collected all at one time. As an example, if we wanted to look at the average height of a statistics class, we would measure the students in class to gather our data, and that would be a cross-sectional study. The second type is a retrospective study. In a retrospective study, data is collected using records obtained from the past. As an example, we may want to study the average cost of a car in the 1950s. Therefore, we would gather data of the price of several types of new cars during this decade. So we would have to be collecting data and records from the past. The last type of observational study is a longitudinal study. These studies collect data over a period of time. As an example, we may gather data on if children watched a certain educational show when they were young. We then gather their graduating GPA from high school and see if this show had any effect on their high school GPA. That would be an example of a longitudinal study. We want to look at something and how it progresses through time. On the other hand, we have experimental studies. In these studies, the researcher manipulates one of the variables and then tries to determine how the manipulation influences other variables. In a true experimental study, we should assign the subjects to groups randomly. In addition, the treatment should be assigned to groups at random. In an experiment, we have two types of variables. The first is the independent variable. This is also known as the explanatory variable. The independent variable is the variable that's being manipulated. As an example, let's consider a study that we're doing to see the effects of drinking coffee and how it affects one's sleep. In this study, we instruct certain people to drink a certain number of cups of coffee shortly before bedtime. So the independent variable would be the number of cups of coffee that they drink. It's the thing that we're controlling. The other variable is the dependent variable. This is also known as the outcome variable. The dependent variable is the result of the study. It's what came out of the study. So going back to our example with coffee and sleep, the result of the study, maybe we measured the length of time they slept after drinking their cups of coffee or how many hours it took them to fall asleep after that cup of coffee. Whichever one of those we choose to measure in this particular experiment would be our outcome variable or our dependent variable. And there are some things that could go wrong in an experimental study as well. So let's take a look at the different things that may go wrong. The first is known as the Hawthorne effect. This is where subjects change their behavior in ways that affect the study just by knowing they're in a study. As an example, if we want to look at a study about different weight loss mechanisms, subjects may know that they're supposed to be losing weight and may exercise more or eat healthier which would then cause an effect in our study. We also have the placebo effect. This is when subjects actually respond favorably because they know they are a part of a study, even if they're not receiving treatment. We see this a lot in things like drug trials. Even if we have a patient that is not receiving the actual drug and is instead receiving the placebo, the sugar pill, they know they're a part of a study and so their body will start responding favorably. Finally, we have confounding variables. These are variables that influence the results of the study, but was not separated from the independent variable. 
there are these background things that could be going on that we didn't control for or were not able to control for. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any topics in particular and statistics that you would like to see on a later video, make sure to let me know in the comments below.